Hello everyone, I'm Charles Clark, and I'm here to give you a demonstration of the photoelectric effect uh, using some common things that you've seen before. So we have here a sign. It reads, Exit Salida. That's Latin for this way to the salad bar. And we put this down on the floor so that when the lights go out in the dining room, the diners can still find their way to the salad bar. This is a phosphorescent strip, and when it's exposed to, to light, you see it charges up, and then it slowly, uh, it glows nicely afterwards by, uh, well, as you can see, what happens are the, the photons in the light of the flashlight uh, excite a molecule in the strip, and then that molecule slowly radiates in the green. Now we're going to pause and let this uh, die off for a moment, but I want to show you how the color of the light matters. So the white light that I just used is a mixture of all possible colors. Now let's, let's, let's look at what happens with the red, the red laser pointer. So red, you see when this thing glows in the green, red is on the other side of the green. It's a longer wavelength. So when we put red on, the, on this strip, it hardly charges it at all. You can barely see it. Even when we put a, we have a quite a powerful green laser here, even with a green laser, there's very minimal charging. Now, we're increasing the photon energy as we go in this direction. So now I have a, um, a Blu-ray laser, 405 nanometers, and you see the Blu-ray actually charges the strip very intensely. Ah, I hope I haven't destroyed it. Finally, there's a, a um, ultraviolet light emitting diode at about 380 nanometers. And this is, this is really much weaker than any of those lasers that you saw, but you see it, it really has a massive effect on the charging. So this is the sort of thing that you can do at home, uh, I advise caution. Uh, but now I'm going to take advantage of an instrument that we have here at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, the SURF-3 synchrotron radiation source. You can see there's a streak of light here that's being produced by the synchrotron. It's a continuous spectrum showing all the colors of the rainbow, uh, plus colors that you haven't seen. Here's an ordinary business card, and you can see that that glows to some degree out here, which is in the ultraviolet, where your, your eye can't pick it up. So let's take this strip off, and I want to show you the final, the final uh, demonstration here. When we put the strip in the field of the light of the synchrotron, then you can see we see the, the, norm, the normal um, rainbow spectrum that, that's, that I can perceive. Then beyond that spectrum, it's glowing because the ultraviolet radiation is able to excite the molecules in the strip. Now what I want you to watch carefully is what happens when I withdraw the strip down. So here I go. Now can you see that the only part that's glowing in the green is the part that was to the left of the green part of the spectrum here. This is an illustration of the Stokes Law that is described in Einstein's paper, which says that in a a phosphorescent medium like this, if you illuminate it with one color of light and then it emits a second color, the, the second color will be at a, at a, a lower frequency, uh, sorry, a, higher, a lower frequency or a longer wavelength than the, the color that irradiates irradiate. it. So that means that all, all the charging action on this strip comes from the, the colors that are to the left of the green. So that's a very practical illustration of Stokes' Law, and it shows you how the color of light actually has a very strong effect on its ability to cause physical and chemical changes in the medium. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.